So in this video we're going to have a look around Castle Acre Priory. It's, uh, the ruins are extensive and uh, well worth a visit. Come and have a look. Buildings of Castle Lake Priory, though ruined, give an excellent impression of the layout and grandeur of the monastery in the Middle Ages. The west front of Castle Lake Priory is one of the glories of English Romanesque architecture. It gives a magnificent idea of the former splendour of the Priory buildings. The west front functioned as a spectacular prelude to the interior of the church, beyond the three doors. Its richly carved decoration includes many of the most distinctive motifs of English Romanesque or Norman architecture. These include interlaced architrading, chevron moulded decoration, zigzag, chip carving, grotesque zoomorphic corpals and diaper pattern. They are thought to be purely decorative rather than symbolic and reflect the belief of the Cluniac order of the glory of God could be reflected by magnificent material things. In the 15th century, the west front was altered dramatically when the smaller, round-headed windows of the original 12th century building were knocked out and replaced with a larger window under a pointed arch. With this exception and the loss of the tops of the two towers, the west front still gives an excellent idea of how magnificent the building once was. The bay window is leaning out quite a long way. This is the northwest tower, although the sign there is extremely weather worn. Certainly a tower. The architecture is astonishing. Certainly overlooked nicely by Castle Acre Church. And this is the nave of the Priory Church. This would have been spectacular. The nave altar. There's an awful lot remains, but an awful lot has gone. There's a view looking at the west tower from the nave. So you can see the cross, Yes. but then there's an awful lot of buildings to the left. I don't know what they are. That would make sense. I assume that's original. What I want to know is what is holding that up, up there? So maybe part of the original wall around the whole yeah. site? Because as we drove, drove in, there was sections of wall there. whether there was a river or a something here, but then you've got the structure still the, at the side of where the, the floor, holding the floor up to the next level.
How would you say that? The rear door? Oh, that's what I was thinking. Does that mean rear Red, door? Rear door? They are. Rear door, maybe. Not up on my Latin. The Monk's Dormitory and Day Stair. Much of the East Range was occupied by a huge dormitory on the upper floor, the single long room in which the monks slept. So this wouldn't have been individual dormitories, that no. would have been above us. Yep. So looking at it, we've got the pillars here. So this is the clearly these pillars they're here. They're calling that the vaulted undercroft. The stairs to nowhere. So this would have been the stairs to the dormitory. So the chapter house. If that artist's impression is as it was, that would have been extremely impressive. The thing I can't make out is that end, according to that, looks curved, which doesn't tie up with what we've got here. Got some original flooring as well. Out there is curved. Okay, so perhaps this wall was built later on. Yeah. That's the, the cloister. The cloister, an enclosed courtyard surrounded by the domestic quarters of the monks, is both geographically and symbolically the centre of the Castle Acre Priory. That's a good definition of what a cloister is. So it looks from this, these walls here, are what's in front of us here. Yep. So this would have all been enclosed. The undercroft. That ceiling is stuck. Oh, on the first floor level now, that gives a different perspective. An old fireplace that goes nowhere now. So potentially this one's open. That's an old but really nice wooden ceiling. And a door that's been closed off. Wow, it's quiet in here. Uh, the roof has clearly been redone at some point, that chimney doesn't go outside. But it's nice to see a room roughly as it was. Prior's great chamber gives some idea of the palatial accommodation which the Priors of Castle Lake have felt their rank deserved. The room was built in the early 14th century. The lower flatter timber roof is the earlier built between 1366 and 1390. The great chamber was lavishly redecorated by prior John Winchesley, appointed in 1510. He added the fireplace and the large bay window, once filled with stained glass bearing his initials and motto. He also uh, painted the ceiling with red and white roses, the symbols of the Tudor King Henry VIII, who ironically was later to close the priory down. You see this is the representation of the lower ceiling. Yep. You see these roses here? Yep. They still remain. In fact, there's one there with quite a bit of colour still in it. Wow. I'm surprised. In fact, if you look at the detail of this hearth, there's still quite a lot of paint on it. Where does this lead? And you can see how they did the divides, the partitions. Because this is certainly non-structural timber. But then you've got the plaster in between. And again, you've got the roses on the ceiling, or on the beams anyway. So this is the Prior's Chapel. Again, you've got paint still on here. I 
did not expect any of that to remain. latter porch and just the detail in the arch is still here so look how extensive this would have been it goes a long way back we found the well dried up now. And you can see where the water course used to come right the way across. Doesn't look like a modern day fish tank. I don't know if they would have been full pieces of flint wouldn't they originally or are they? I don't know because some are four, some are three, some are one could be repair work that's been done but some of them look like they're split into two or three but perhaps they were originally one piece. Itch. 